Hey guys, and welcome back to a continuation of our series on cavity back, cavity back versus blade irons. Yes. So we got some questions about, well, we got a lot of really good mm -hmm. suggestions about other tests that people wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, and one of the really good ones I thought was kind of the whole myth or possibly fact about is a blade or a really small iron easier to work mm -hmm. than a big cavity back iron? So is it easier to hit high and low, draw and fade? Um, is there you know, any kind of validity to that whole thing? And it'll be cool for us to test that mm -hmm. out and see exactly what the actual numbers are showing. And it, I would imagine it will probably vary player to player. Mm -hmm. Your own personal ability would be a factor. Um, but obviously the head designs, would you say offer some, I guess, limitations as to whether a club can be hit in different trajectories or left and right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big part of what, you know, our selection of certain irons is right. when we look at the, the skill level of the player, um, you know, when we're talking to them and we're, we're asking, like, what do you like to do? Do you like to shape it? Are you looking to play a stock shot? Right. You know, what, what, what's, your, what's your sort of preference in that front? That's when we start to kind of, uh, you know, select the iron. So it's a process of elimination, really, in that sense okay. that, you know, when they, they give us our preferences and they go, yeah, love shaping it, we might go, well, we probably don't want this type of iron, that type of iron, um, especially with the type of swing they have. So, um, you know, that will make more sense of that um, sort of description as we go along here. But we've chosen a, a pretty big cavity back iron in the, yes. the JPX 900 hot metal. Yep. Super, uh, really, really high performance. Um, call it a game improvement iron, large cavity back, wide sole, um, you know, designed with a bit of offset on there, mm -hmm. uh, sort of, you know, wider profile, brings the CG away from the face, so encourages some different sort of rotational properties to the club. Right, versus? Um, yep, yeah, we've got our, our tried and tested. We're going to wear a hole in this Mura blade. Absolutely. Uh, we're testing it every week these days, but we may as well keep that consistent. And, yeah, um, that's what we've used for the first two we tests. We have, and we've got them both at the same loft and lie. Yep. Uh, so 28 and 28. Perfect. So, we're, you know, the Mizuno, Mizuno JPX 900 hot metal actually moves relatively easy. So when I was kind of making a, an it adjustment, forge, forge it's not, it's not as cast, but oh, okay. it, it moves, it moves nicely. So there's, there's no problem moving that one uh, to get them, you know, in line. So we use the same shaft, grip, length, so on and so forth. So um, be be interesting to see, Matt, how you are able to, you know, shape the ball, how you feel like if you have to work harder with one right. versus the other, yeah. if you find one is one dimensional, like all those sorts of things. Because I mean, in, in some senses, like this head, for example, I mean, you, you wouldn't want to call it one dimensional, but it was designed to hit the ball high. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with one dimensional. No, of course not. Um, you know, if you know not. which way you're gonna, you're gonna hit it and, really that's the only way it wants to go well i would rather eliminate one half of the golf totally. course most of the time yeah you know it's you're really dealing at a high skill level when you're when you're looking to work the ball and For shape sure. the ball and there are some players that probably are higher handicaps that yeah. do like to play some shots some that, people that, do. that may still be curious about this um but i mean that's i can see how you say that's part of the fitting process is saying okay what kind of shots do you want to hit yeah. first and foremost yeah and then pick an iron head that matches mm -hmm. that Theoretically, yeah. So should we uh, just crack a few and see let's, what we can? Uh, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So well, why don't we hit? Uh, why don't we hit a little selection of draws and fades? What do we okay. say? Three each way. Sure. Three draws, three fades. Sounds good. Nice, nice, soft little fades, baby fade. <laughs> Go that way. Not easy for you to fade it. Not your normal. I think that moved at least a couple. It moved yeah. a slightly oh. spin axis there. It moved about three inches, that was good. <laughs> nice, like that one a lot. That's better. That's nice. All right, so do me a favor, you've hit two little fades. That was, a, that was really nice. Hit, hit me one with some curve. Big fade, right? yeah. Yeah, so I mean, ultimately we're trying to see uh, what the iron can, can do from a shaping standpoint. Okay. Don't worry if it, if it goes a little short and over cuts, but. That's my boy. Love that one. Yeah, that can definitely move. Voila. Okay. Now we're gonna see uh, three better fades yeah, than, that was better. than those three. Right, let's, uh, let's turn it around and go the other way. Give us three draws.
Now you're showing off. All right, so we're seeing, yeah, we're seeing the nice subtle difference between the delivered loft uh, on a on a fade versus a draw. So we're delivered loft obviously goes down a little bit on the draw, which Sub is great. Substantially, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does, and that's where you know we, we start to add you know, another half a club on where the good ones with the fades. We asked you to curve the third one, which is why it didn't go as far. Right. But we add a half a club when we turn it around and shape it the other way. Should hit a little bit. You want a bigger draw on this one? Sure. Let's see. Yeah, let's work it. Oh, it's not as good as no. But I think the draw is exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, that that amount of curve was ideal. That amount of curve is good. Okay. Same again. Let's see another one of those. Let's maybe cook one. Right. So maybe huge. See, yeah, you're you're kind of trying to. Hit one back into the wind, you're trying to trap it. Okay. He's on form today, folks. Really good. So probably Feel see, good? Probably see the, uh, the spin go down quite a bit with those yeah, draws you versus do. the fades, yeah? Yep, you see the spin go down and, and obviously the, the other numbers move up around that as well. See that dynamic loft less again. And you actually see the club head speed spike a little bit. So the club head will rotate a little bit, a little bit quicker. So the right. path moves left for you. The face will close faster. So this, this motion as someone releases the club versus hanging on to yep, it, that's you it. add so a bit more we'll speed. will change speed. Yeah. So I would say from my feedback, because the club head also is so neutral with offset, mm -hmm. I'm not the best at hitting fades and it definitely felt easy to just kind of go either way yeah. like the club wasn't I guess biased in either yeah. direction you were able to you were able to shape that pretty much at call there which yeah. was which is obviously you know what you want as a better player that gives you the option when you need to you know get out of trouble perhaps right. yeah. or access a tough pin you know if you if you've got a kind of back right pin and you want to kind of feed it up the green on a lower trajectory you want to maybe hit that draw you know, Tiger talks a lot about hitting the, the nine the nine different yeah. shots. and which is what he, he did kind of really well this past uh, weekend yeah. at the Players, which is, I think, why he played so well. I know. I know. You, you have to, that course, you have to hit in uh, shapes to access the pin placements. Uh, okay, really good stuff. This will be interesting to see how that stacks up against the, the yeah. big cavity back. So let's swap it over. All right, Matt, so swapped it over, put the Mizuno iron uh, head on on your X7 shaft, keep things consistent with the feel and uh, length as we like to do, keep all the variables to a minimum. Um, initial impressions, obviously the head's a little different shape from the Mura blade we've just hit. I'm noticing a bit more offset, I guess yeah. is probably the most obvious thing. Yeah. It's a bigger head, obviously, but mm -hmm. um, be interesting to see how much that offset affects whether we can hit those two shots. Yeah, and whether, you know, obviously, you know, people know offset will have a, more of a bias towards the draw shape. Yeah, so is offset, is it there to, to limit slicing for people? Is yeah. that the point of it? Yeah, so when you set the, the, the club face back of the, the hosel or the shaft line, right. uh, the shaft axis, in order to cr allow a little bit more time for the, the club face to rotate. Okay. And, and obviously then square the face up. So right. for people who tend to leave the face a little open and slice or fade, gotcha. this allows the club a chance to rotate. Also move CG back a little bit, which will increase the launch a little so bit. So we should so. see a higher shot. Yep, yeah, we would expect that. Fades first? Fades first. Okay. Sounded really crisp. That was a good hit. Definitely faded. Yeah. Yep. Wow, lovely strike like that. One good. A bit toy matty, come on. So let's go, yeah, a little toy. <laughs> Let's uh, try to shape one a bit more then. Yeah. Because I mean, it's safe to say that hitting a, a small fade mm -hmm. with this type of club shouldn't be a big issue in any case. Yeah, you should, I mean, especially- should be when you start to really move and, the and ball. And people, people watch and will go, well, of course Matt can hit a fade. I mean, he's yeah. a, he's a, he's a excellent player. And we know, you know, we know that we're just, we're kind of running through, you know, some different shots, some little selections, just to see how easy if you, yeah. so you're kind of like the, the grip video, Let's see if there's something in it. Let's well, I made the, same, made the same swing. That's yeah. really the, the difference is that I'm not 
uh, that swing, I don't think I worked harder to hit that fade. Right. However, on this bigger fade, it'll be interesting to see if I have to really Definitely. push it. Nice, well hit. Curved it plenty. Yeah. Curved Absolutely. that one plenty. I mean, I'm noticing the ball flying seems to be higher. Yeah, it does. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good, really strong there. High with this one, isn't it? It's going nice and high. I gotta say, I don't really think I'm having that much more trouble fading it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Looks like you're you're able to to fade it no problem. It's possible that hitting the shot that really curves mm -hmm. that I was able to hit with the blade, maybe that's a bit harder to hit. Maybe. But like to step up and say I'm I'm gonna aim at the right side of a green and fade it back. Yeah. I don't think that was any more difficult with this than the other one. It's good to it's good to know. All right. Cook a couple draws in here. Let's do a couple of draws. It's a draw. Woo. That was nice. Yeah. Sim I mean, honestly, it's pretty similar in uh, just looking at the club. I think I would have more confidence in hitting a draw because it the offset kind of gets in your head thinking I can draw that yeah. a bit easier, but in terms of the actual ball flight, to me that looked, aside from being higher, it looked very similar. Yeah, that was well hit. I started that one more left to try yeah. to hook it in, but it was a pretty good shot. Okay, Matt. Um Good stuff, interesting. Struck them both good, so it mm -hmm. wasn't too difficult to fade the, the cavity back, was it? No, I don't think so. So the absolute most I would say is that the mirror blade to hit the kind of the giant fade, maybe that would be a bit easier than the larger cavity. Yeah. But to step up and hit a normal fade shot, mm. like a, 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 you know, a stock fade, I don't think there was any difference from what I saw. No, you were able to hit that little soft fade yep. nicely. Yep. And if anything, I would probably say, uh, you know, to hit the, the shape in control, it's probably easier than Mizuno probably. It probably was, it honestly. Probably. No, it's true because, um, yeah. well, I, I wasn't striking them both uh, amazingly well. They were, they were good. Yeah, they, they were, were good, decent. but like the, the slight miss hits with this, mm -hmm. I found that the shape, I guess, retained itself better. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, I, you know, I can almost sort of, uh, sort of think, it, you know, people watching this going, well, if Matt can shape the, you know, the Mizunos as easily can shape the mirrors. Why is he going with the mirrors? But, you know, there's, there's the part where you go, okay, you know, you roasted a couple that flew yeah. to 11. It's the distance you know, control was a the big... The distance control was, was better. You know, yeah. you, you, you flew one 207, another one 202, and you know, the mirror was going, was going kind of similar distance when you hit it good, but there was, there was a big height difference. And, yep. you know, I think for you... As a better player, Matt, still, you know, uh, the mirror is a better iron for some like I think yourself. controlling it in, in a variety of conditions yeah. would probably be easier. Yeah. Um, we're skipping ahead a bit. We'll, we'll try a couple high and low shots We're going to well. try a couple of high and low ones as well. Yeah, we're not going to just try right and left. Because I think there may be a narrative to the up and down that might be I quite more interesting. I think so, more so than, than the uh, draw versus yeah, fade. because when we're looking at this window right here, um, sorry, in the, the comparison... We can see the cavity back did have a tendency to go higher, but it wasn't really through launch angle. No. A little bit. It's it a was a spin. bit of spin, yep. and it was also a bit of uh, ball speed. So Which we is are, all kind of expected, and it's kind of what we found with our mm -hmm. other tests anyway. Similar yeah. kind of result. Exactly. Okay, right, let's, uh, so let's go back. So while we've got the, the, the Mizuno, why don't we hit yeah, uh, some, some highs and lows? Okay, start with low on this guy. Sure, let's do it.
So no issue hitting the high one? No. <clears throat> I like that one a lot. Honestly, the, the low ones, um, the low ones took off nicely as well. Yeah. Just played it back in my stance a bit and knocked off the finish and they were fairly low uh, trajectories. A couple more high ones? Sure, a couple of high ones. Wow, that's about <laughs> as good as I could possibly hit it. That one that was, really that was high, wasn't it? <laughs> that was, Jeez. I'd love to know what the height of that one was. 137, pretty high. Pretty so high. you got it down as low as 77, so as high as 137. So you were, you were able to separate it by 60 feet. 77, I'll tell you, was the first one I hit. I hit that the most solid of the low ones, and that took off literally exactly the way I was trying to hit it. Really good. That would be like a nice into the wind kind of mm, shot for me. Yeah. Yep. Save that one for the links, Matty. Yes, sir. So just, yeah, altered ball, uh, altered launch angle a little bit. Spin rate didn't fluctuate too much, a little no. bit, but um, yeah, land angle was kind of going between sort of 40, low 40s into 50-ish. Uh, okay, really good. No issue controlling that one high and low. I was very happy with all those. No. Um, the only reason I think that the second two low ones didn't go a bit lower is I just left the face open a hair, whereas yeah. the first one I really kept uh, more square. But no, I think it was pretty easy to vary the height. I like that a lot. Okay, let's pop on the Mura. All right, Matt, let's have a look at the blade. The Mura blade, um, we would expect this to, you know, be quite easy to shape up and down. Should be, yeah. Should be. So based on our old tests, we didn't see a ton of difference once we equalized the loft mm -hmm. in, I guess, different conditions. There was a little bit of extra launch and a little bit of extra spin with that G400 yep. Max, but it wasn't like so substantial that mm -hmm. you can't hit that club low, which we saw. Like yeah. that club can be hit low just fine. Definitely. I think that um, what I'm expecting to see is that maybe this goes a little bit lower mm -hmm. on the low shot, but the differences are not what people think. Yeah. Well, 60 feet was a lot between the high and the low one. And Crazy, the, you know. yeah. We'll see if I can match. Would you say that's kind of the best measurement of how workable it is? How much difference I can make in those two things? Yeah, I think, I think the, yeah, the high and low and the, and the sort of, and the left and right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you, you're putting through the real paces here and you're figuring out which is a good iron for so That's you. what workability means, right? Left, yeah. right, high, low. That's, that's there's it. not really a whole lot else you have to do with it. The ball can uh, perform on command. Okay, we'll start with low. Okay. Nice, that's nice, Matt. It's definitely yeah, you're better. you're controlling the, the flight of this one down very nicely. Yeah. No problem with that, eh? No, not at all. Height-wise, that's coming out, yeah, below. Uh, a little lower. To be fair, I turned it a bit more, but... Um, okay. I probably made a little bit more of an, uh, let's say, an extreme motion with the... Uh, with the JPX to get it to come down. Mm -hmm. Try to keep one left of center here. Like aside from my alignment, starting it too far right, I'd be really happy with those. Yeah, see that's, I hit a, a couple exactly like that actually. Right, right. So I'm curious what the height of that one is. That was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good strike. Probably about 70, probably about 78 feet-ish. 82. Yeah. So how does that compare to the second one that I hit with um, the JPX? A sim uh, well, okay, sorry, the third one. So similar. 81, 82. Those yeah. two swings were very similar. Yeah, same, very similar ball speeds, spun the Mizuno a fraction more. Yeah. Exact same land angle, pretty much exact same height. Okay. I would say that the you know equal you know equal swing and equal strike in terms of shape. You're really finding those are doing the same. same They're flying thing. pretty similar. I mean, the draw may have flown a, a fraction lower yeah, with yeah. this, mm -hmm. but okay, I didn't, you know it wasn't too bad. Should we? You hit, want to flight a couple up? Let's hit a couple high, yeah.
Okay, Matty, good, uh, good little test. Um, quite surprising for me that there was actually not that much of a difference between the cavity back and the blade, and you were actually able to shape both of them quite comfortably. I would agree with that for sure, yeah. I mean, the, the subtle difference maybe in, mm -hmm. in this guy flying a bit higher in both cases mm -hmm. was way less than I would have expected. I yeah. would have thought that the low shot would have been kind of, not unhittable, but just seriously higher than the mirror would go. Um, but it wasn't nearly as much as, as I would have thought in either direction. Like the fades and the draws, mm -hmm. the highs and the lows, there was a bit of a difference, but mm -hmm. not much. The, uh, the interesting part for me was both times you hit it, the Mizuno was definitely quicker than the Mura. Mm -hmm. Ball uh, speed wise. Ball speed wise was quicker. And the both times there was about a 400 RPM separation. In backspin. Backspin. Which is kind of consistent with what we've seen yeah. in the previous tests. Yeah, and that's with the same loft. So with the loft is 28 in both, like we stated at the start. So right. Um, that's, that's pretty interesting that, that kind of delivery dynamics are mm. producing, you know, I would call that uh, around half a club of spin difference. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. um, yeah, good and interesting. So, you know, I think, you know, I, I, my mind there just went straight to someone who's looking for elevation, ball speed and spin, you know, create elevation. Mm -hmm. um, that Mizuno is a great iron oh, for Oh, totally. Them. So yeah. they're trying to hit it a bit higher. Um, and how did it feel to you? It felt great. Nice. Yeah. Certainly. It's, it's Certainly obviously different, yeah. but nice and forgiving. Mm -hmm. Miss hits felt, you know, I could tell that I miss hit them, but mm -hmm. they didn't, you know, they didn't feel twisting no, and stuff not, like that. Not too penalizing. No, not at all. Good. That was a nice club. Um, so we obviously saw you were able to shoot them both right to left. Talk to us a little bit about the up and down. Um, so we started with the JPX on the up and down. Mm -hmm. the, the first shot I hit with this was like perfect. It would yeah. have been like my ideal, I'm um, punching one low into a par three. Right. Came off really nice, went mm -hmm. way lower than what I've expected from that head. Yep. The, well, the next two I hit with low. it were, were good. I just left them open slightly, which is the only reason that I mm -hmm. think those went to 97 and 81. They were still low, good shots. They just peaked up a bit because I left the face a hair yeah. open. But it, honestly, I was surprised by the ability to hit this low. Yeah, so you were the first one you hit at 77 feet with that one. Mm. Then the Mura you were able to hit a little lower. Yes, there was about sure. 10, a 10 foot uh, sort of window that was a fraction lower on that one. So And those were, were both kind of slight draw mm -hmm. shots. Um, yeah. It felt like, yeah, you could get that one down just a hair. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell me what eight or nine feet is. Not significant, I guess, overly when you're hitting that type of shot, but it's noticeable. Decent amount. I mean, we're, you know, the acceptance of the, of the uh, ball by the green, you know, three degrees of land angle is different. You know, it's definitely going to come in a little bit softer right. with the Mizuno. So, um, yeah, that's, it's definitely not, not nothing. You know, you killed the spin 600 RPMs, lowered the launch a little bit, mm -hmm. ball speeds were similar. So, Good. I mean, there's difference, but again, would you say this is less than what you expected to see? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. That's I, how I, th feel I thought too. you may have struggled to shape the ball as as easily. I thought the the Mizuno may have went quite a bit higher. Yeah. Um, and just too and just too you know yeah. one dimensional in the mm -hmm. window. Yeah, I think so. I mean, th it was interesting. So the Mura was on the extreme. You were able to hit it, an extreme low shot better. Correct. The, Mura, the Mizuno, you were able to hit an extreme high shot better. Correct. So there was, there was, there was subtle differences oh, sure. in that way, but not much, no. really not much, I, you know. No, good. well, this is the thing. I mean, it's like swing to swing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yes, I probably have more ability to shape it than most people, yeah. but it's still comparing one club to the other because mm -hmm. I, I basically made the same swings. Yeah. They did produce slightly different results, but mm -hmm. again, just not that not that different. I mean, I wouldn't say if someone came to you and said, I want to work the ball, I can't use this. Mm -hmm. To me, that's yeah. not accurate mm -hmm. because yes, you can definitely work the ball, maybe just a fraction less yep. on the low side. Yeah, exactly. And maybe a fraction less on the fade side. Mm -hmm. I will say that. I mean, yep. the fades I hit with this when you said hit a, hit a big mm -hmm. fade, I think it was a little easier to hit a big fade. Right. Um, but that being said, to hit a nice normal fade mm -hmm. or even a, a decent fade, this was not still, difficult either. Still capable of doing yeah. it. So it wasn't like it took, it took that shot out of your repertoire. No, no. Def I didn't make a swing where I thought that should fade and it mm -hmm. went straight with mm -hmm. this club. Definitely yeah. not. No, good. I mean, I think uh, I think that was that was you know exactly what we we're trying to you know establish yeah. from the test was um, how our ability to to kind of distinguish one to the other and, and see is it a big difference or is it a mm -hmm. small difference? And it's a small difference. Definitely. You know, in, in a player like your own hands, you can still hit the shots, you're still capable of hitting the shots. So, you know, for people out there who maybe are skilled but aren't playing as much golf and go, 
I actually don't want to burden myself by playing with those small clubs anymore. I want to want to go a little bit more sort of you know, towards the bigger, yes. um, you know, more forgiving clubs. You can do that and still not sacrifice the ability to shape the shots. I think that's totally fair to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned um, in our last episode Andrew Rice using the G400s. Yeah. KJ Choi is using them too, from that's what right. I've read. Yeah. There's no way KJ hits nice big fades on a lot of shots. Yeah. So yeah. he works the ball, and good players like Andrew, are, I'm sure, are able to mm -hmm. work the ball too. So definitely. I it's mean, there. It's definitely there. Um, you know, I was telling you about DA points when I was working with him, and yep. he, he had his, you know, his, his I5 uh, pings, and you know, same sort of thing. You know, it's a bigger. He, I mean, he has had the the offset pressed out of those, right? But it's still a bigger head, and you yeah. know, and. He still human. I mean, he can shape it as good as anyone. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's super, super skill level. But interesting, um, guys. I hope this was kind of uh, helpful in, in the decision making. And you know, the, ultimately, that's what these videos are all about. For it's sure. all about you know helping debunk certain myths and, and uh, maybe helping you guys when you're choosing certain irons to go through the process of testing in a I slightly totally different agree. way. Because I think someone may have done the same test and. Um, maybe they would get slightly yeah. different results, yeah. but I think it it stops people mm -hmm. from even testing an iron like this mm -hmm. if they think they want to work the ball. Yeah, that's it. Don't don't even give me that one. Yes. I can't work it. Well, Which you, is you can. I can honestly say I've hit a lot of different yeah. irons, especially mm -hmm. since I started coming to see you guys. Yeah, there's no way that yeah. someone who can work the ball yeah. can't hit different shots with that club. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this. I feel like I have mentioned it last week, but um, you know I'll, I'll say it again. One of the best compliments that we've had and, and the feedback we've been receiving from you guys, and thanks so much for everyone who's taken time to send emails. Um, that is just so uh, so humbling and flattering that you guys would take time to send us emails, mm. reach out on social media, you know, Instagram. We try and reply back to you know yeah. everyone um, as much as we possibly can. We're right in the peak season, so some of the more detailed stuff we will get to, but it might take us a bit longer. Um, but the team are really they're they're trying to get back to all of you. But some of the feedback that we're getting that we absolutely love is when you guys tell us that you're now going into fittings with a, a sort of slightly broader knowledge of mm. what the questions to ask, the products that are working well in the marketplace. So you're, you know, you're using this, and, and this is how we intend it, as a resource um, to, to kind of help make better educated decisions. Exactly. That, and that's ultimately you know, the, the effect of what we're trying to get with this channel. We'd love people to come and see us, in, you know, whether it's by plane, train, or automobile, whatever yeah, way you can come and see us. But, you know, ultimately, if you're going to go and see someone closer to home, that's good as well. Just be armed with uh, a little bit more knowledge, and, and hopefully this helps you do that. I saw a comment just this morning, actually, and it was pretty much exactly what you described, yeah. and I kind of sat back and thought, like, wow, that's, that's great. That's kind of what I this know. is all about. That's what it's all about, and, yeah. and hopefully that's that's uh, the, the effect and the, the, the ripple effect of what we're trying to do. Absolutely. So, yeah. guys, again, let us know what you thought of the test between these two. And actually, it would be cool to get your experiences if anyone's... Yeah. I had the both. opposite. Maybe someone's yeah. had the opposite and went, tried, you know, the blade yeah. and shaped it perfectly, but couldn't shape those. Let us know, because it, honestly, it's it's we're obviously doing tests as scientifically as we can, mm -hmm. but I think the more golfers that get involved and leave their comments, yeah. people like to read other people's comments and see their experiences. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let us know Definitely. how it worked out for you guys. Definitely. Guys, this has been great. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.